Hi. It's Scott Cat Live. I just got done with a 20 minute racist rant on my stream about how, how, how much I dislike white people. Thank you for tuning into my, my video today. <laughs> You missed my racist rant, but I can hint on it. I can hint it, you know. I had a good little 20-minute racist rant about white people just now. And uh, oh, I'm so sorry you missed it, guys. I should have recorded it. I should have recorded it. Oh, I, I suppose I should hide the fact that I do things like that somehow. And, and Or, you know, I guess I guess it makes me two-faced if I, you know, if I hide it. So I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to say what I think. Oh man, were all the world wars and all the massacres and all the school shootings and all the economy collapses and all the banker bail bailouts committed by white people? Was COVID committed by white people? Oh no, your white racism at the start of your video is incredibly uncomfortable for me. How dare you do your white racism on your video? I used to like you. You were a good streamer, man, but how dare you talk shit about white people? <laughs> <laughs> say it to your face too right to your face uh so uh there we go so uh there we go uh activate hi it is uh december 2nd 2023 it is a saturday it is nine in the morning last night i drank a pint of vodka and i'm not even hung over right now i feel great so I just drank a fifth of vodka. You dare me to drive? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, Slim, I just drank a fifth of vodka. You dare me to drive? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but, uh, yep, straight sober, having fun. I'm on WoW Hardcore. I did not like Season of Discovery, and I will absolutely say it. Uh, I did not like uh, Season of Discovery, and I, I will not sit on that piece of shit. I'm sorry. It was not the experience I thought it would be. It was not like what I wanted it to be. Uh, the exploration was not good. It was RNG exploration that was designed around uh, um, rewarding data mining and rewarding uh, secrecy and rewarding, like, you know, uh, communication that wasn't complete kind of thing. I didn't like their, their, their discovery system and season of discovery. I didn't think it was very good. I think it was based around letting the haves uh, get it before the have nots. And I, I and I did not like that. I I saw some 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 uh, some treatment in SOD uh, for a certain class of player that I think kind of excluded uh, people who work and have lives, and rewarded people who don't have lives. And I don't I don't I did not like that. Uh, I didn't like what they were doing to the economy from the fucking get go. And I didn't like how much walking. I didn't like how they dropped the they lowered the drop rate was my major complaint because they they kept the level cap twenty five. They lowered the drop rates by ten percent or something like that. It's barely noticeable, but it was there. And I, I saw other people talking about it in the chat when I when I quit uh, uh, season of discovery. I was like, oh god, is this as bad as I think? And I was like, hey guys, like have you noticed it? That, like no, what, uh, some other guy said it. He was like, hey, guys, have you noticed? said the drop rate is bad and i was like yes thank god somebody said something i just did these quests on horde just like less than two weeks ago and it was not like this it was not like this i was done in from one to level seven in like an hour it took me an hour to get from one to level two not just because of the drop rates but because there were so many people taking the mobs that you had to sit there and wait for the spawns to hyper spawn and like i did not think that was a good system it, it, re it really did not um and so you know and i don't know he left a bad taste in my mouth it seemed exclusionary i didn't like what the what the white nerds were doing to the economy already i didn't like what they were charging for enchants off the get-go and all this other shit and i was just like all right well this whole toxic vibe is it was good for a day but i'm not gonna sit here my my initial reattraction to wow was based off of hardcore and i'm going to stay i'm gonna i'm gonna stay true to that hardcore was what i came here for and I, you know, oh, I went to, I went to the wrong vendor is what I did. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do this uh, soliloquy. So, uh, yeah, um, I think that's all I had for you in terms of how I felt about season of discovery. It is unfortunate that I won't be playing it today, but I did not think it was a good mode.
And, uh, you know, I, I think there was always a risk of that. I had cold feet going in, and I think a lot of the uh, the reservations are psychological. But, I mean, whether they're psychological or not, they're, they are there. The reservations are there. Whether they're in my own head or not, it's up to me. But, I mean, I had serious reservations about Season of Discovery going in. I had cold feet the day of. When I got there, I was not that happy with the experience. I don't feel they, that they had improved that side of it. I didn't see anything that was new at all except for abilities that I didn't want or need. And and I could tell right away that the the rating, bullshit, eye level snobbery. Uh, I I feel like a lot of those 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 shitty nerds are using Season of Discovery and Classic as another excuse to do the old eye level exclusionary bullshit that they've always done in the rate in the cock sucking rating scene that I left and and felt no shame leaving even though I was at the top of it. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't ever want to do this again. This eye level exclusionary shit where they just cut everybody out who doesn't have the same eye level as them is just disgusting. I'm not going to I'm not going to engage in this again. I'm not, I did the rating scene is full of full of worthless losers and I'm not going to fucking dance with them. I'm not going into that bar. I'm not drinking with them. I'm not going to do it with them. I'm not doing that PVE nightmare. There's no fucking way. If I'm going to do PVE, it'll be on Rust or Final Fantasy 11. Like, hard, hardcore is PvE, but it has this terrible high-stakes feel to it that feels a lot like full loot shop PvP, which is why I was able to stick around in this mode, you know? Oh, God damn it! I keep trying to go to the trainer, and I can't get her to fucking... I, I, can't, I can't focus enough to get her to the Enchanter. I'm going to stop talking until I can walk to the fucking Enchanter. But it's... It, it, I hate the walking. Like, like, I hate it. Look how long it takes. It's just disgusting. It's like... Anyways, I'm going to drop the, uh, you know, the walk, the walk speed. One of the things about classic plus is, is I, I, I know, I'm, I know, I know nobody in the development scene gives a shit what I think after 27 years of doing this, I have no illusions that, that unless you're famous and rich, the people in the fucking software development scene don't give a shit what you think. Right. But I will register my fucking opinion here. Like there's only so many times we can do your shitty PVE fucking treadmill before we just leave and uh you know I, I was able to stick around hardcore but that sod shit was not to my taste it just was not i did not like it it was it was like boring slow shitty and the, at the end of it is the raid scene and that is not a good reward for me the end of this is is that that wonderful self-aggrandizing like totally ego boosting reward of oh my god i got my first 60 to level or I, got my, I got my first 60 in hardcore right that to me is such a better fucking gameplay loop than all of season discovery combined all of all of the seasons that's a better gameplay loop and I'm going to stick to it. I like, I don't, I don't, uh, I do not approve of SOD. I did not think it was like, you know, I'm going to, it's, I'm going to struggle to log into that server again. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't like that fact. It just is a fact. It's, it sucks. You know, I don't like that. That's the case. That's just where I fell on it. I kept thinking I'm not happy here. I don't want to do this. I didn't like the launch. I didn't like the queue. I didn't like the boomers talking about their sex jokes and the fucking bullshit chat and all their nineties movies references and all and, and how slow they are and how, and how four people let me die at level six, even though th three of them were priests and all this stupid ass shit. I was like, man, I am five feet away and I'm dying from a level nine mob because none of you guys have a clue to come kill it or anything. And I died five feet from two priests and I'm the bad, I'm the bad one. I'm the bad one somehow. I go pull a mob to that party so they can get fucking credit. And I'm, I'm pulling it back and I fucking die. Like on top of two priests in, in, in my party. And they're looking at me like, oh man, uh, why are you dead, scrub? And I'm looking at them being like, man, couldn't you click a button, you fucking lazy, shitty boomers? Couldn't you click a button? I don't want to be around those people. I'm not going to raids and dungeons with them. They can't even cast Renew at level 6. Why the fuck would I want to go in a dungeon with them? Asmogul talks about this all the time. Boomers are fucking slow. I know I am one of them. You know, we're slow. We're slower now. And like, I don't really want to be around that. And wow, at least this toxic, toxic shit. I don't have to either. I can run solo the entire fucking way. I don't have to count on other people or I wouldn't play the game. You know, I'm done with that vibe. I did it for long enough. I did it for fucking, what, since I was 19 until I was 33? What is that? That's, yeah, that's like 14 years I did raiding and, and giant PvE, or like large-scale PvE, and, and I, I don't think it's a good gameplay loop. 
Never have, never will. You know, I was not that excited for raids in the first fucking place. I wanted to be around the people. When you take the, the you know, when the people become toxic and not fun to be around anymore because they're too focused and, and too gear driven, you know, and, and too thirsty and too sweat the bed, that it's not even fun to be around them anymore. No, I'm not going to that raid. No, I'm not going to Black Fathom Deeps. No, I'm not going to Wailing Caverns or, or Dead Mines so the priest can not renew me there. No. No. So, here we go. I'm going to get off the big screen now. Sorry, guys. Just, you know, trying to give you a, a feel of my feelings about Season of Discovery. It was, it did feel toxic to me and unpleasant, and I'm not going back. Sorry. And I'm surprised by this. I was able to complete all of, of New World Angry Earth. And I thought it was really a fun experience. I was not having fun on Season of Discovery. I did not think it was a fun experience. I did not think the combat was good. I don't think the balancing was good. I didn't think the drop rate was good. I don't think the experience was fun. I was really, I felt a lot of shame that I came back there. Didn't feel like it was a good place for me to be. And I'm just registering my opinion. I know it sounds negative, but that, like, I'm going to be true to myself. That was how it, fe that's how I, that's how I felt. That's how it felt to me. And, uh... You know, and, and I'm sorry, that's my failure, not Blizzard's, I'm sure. It's it's my own problems, it's not theirs. But I mean, that's where I fell on it. I was not having fun, and I'm not going back to that piece of shit. I'm not going back to that. Did you train yet? No. I am gonna force her. Jesus Christ, hold on. Please deactivate the big face. I think I've done it a bunch of times. Why won't you keep it that way? Keep it that way. There we go. Uh, so, uh, we'll walk back to the Enchanter and see if I can manage. This is the seventh time I walked to the Enchanter. And this is this stupid point A to point B, crack the whip, blizzard bullshit. You have to go to the trainer. You have to go to there. You burr, 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 crack the whip, you know? And it's like, I go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to the Enchanter. And when I get there, I like busy work is so anathema to me that it, it is not natural to me to do busy work. And so I skip steps all the time and forget what I can to the enchanter for in the first fucking place because busy work is not a natural state for me and that's what i think this this shit is based off of is busy work go to the trainer go to the trainer go to the auction house busy work you know you know fucking finally wait did you give me the training no give me the fucking training why why because i'm level five Oh my god, I'm not leveling a fucking enchanter. I'm not doing that.
I wanted to get to 90 and I'm not going to go, <laughs> I'm not going to. All I can do is disenchant the crappy greens that that that, that my main gets until they're too high level. And that's okay, but that's not really why I did this. God damn it. You and your fucking stupid rules, Blizzard. Fucking Blizzard math. You can't get enchanting on an alt higher than level 5. Blah, blah, blah. Dear God, why? Um, maybe I should try to make money from those. I don't know. Yeah. Seems like I should. Yeah, let's see if I can make some money off those. Those are 15 silver a piece, huh? Really? Okay. I would take 10 silver, I think. Let's go cheaper on this one. You say 1451. The asteroid is depleted. Sure, let's be competitive with it. Sure. Uh, I want 13 of these. What do you mean? I have 13 of them. What are you talking about? All right, fine. One stack of 10. No, 10 stacks of uh, one. 13 stacks of one. God, they changed the auction house weird. It's okay. Uh, and yeah, I post all this. And I waited for this fucking season too. For like five weeks, I was like, oh man, it's gonna be so good. And then I got there and I was like, no, this experience is not fun to me. I'm sorry. And I'm not looking forward to some piece of crap level 25 raid. Uh, you couldn't pay me to do that. Hey, cat, would you take 10 grand to go to the to, to BFD? No. No. No, you couldn't pay me to do that. No. Deal with those people? No. And all that time? Nope. And that crappy dungeon that I've never really liked that much? No. And I'm... Mm -mm, mm -mm. Sorry, guys. I think you're, you're kind of self-deluded about how interested people are about this. I think you needed to make it better than you did. And, and I don't think you did. Uh, you know, I don't think you made this better. Damn, I was I was kind of hoping to at least the get weapon enchants for her, like Minor Beast Slayer, but they're not going to let me reach it, and that really irks me. Stupid Blizzard and their fucking gated behavior. I'm not going to level this warrior to 10. I mean, I might, but I'm not... I, no, no, I'm not leveling this warrior to 10. I mean, I could, but I guess I could. If I was really bored, I suppose I could. It gives, it gives me a reason to do it, but it's still sort of disgusting though why would i level this crappy bank all to 10 just so i could like enchant beast slayer stupid blizzard and their fucking gated behavior this is why i quit retail like they literally are like oh you can't go because you don't have the eye level or you can't uh you can't get this this profession to that level because you're not high enough and Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, God damn it, man. Like, like one of the things I do like about survival is they often don't have any rules. There's not, there's nothing in rust that says you can or can't do anything. Like you can't jump into the sky. Like Neo that's against the rules, but pretty much anything you can think of, you can go do. And blizzard's whole thing is, Oh, pr pr pretty much anything that blizzard can think of. They better make a lot of rules around, you know, and, and, and limit it and gate it a bunch. Um, I'd rather summon a tiger. Oh, oops, I'm out. I'm out of tigers. Uh, yeah, let's go buy tigers, I guess. I went through tigers faster than I thought I would. But I do have some income out of this camp. Like, I have fire crystals coming in and stuff like that. And, and, and other th other stuff is stacking, like tree amp bulbs and tiger hides and black tiger fangs and sheep leather and st stuff like that. So, I mean, I do have some income from this camp, which is nice, but, but, but it does not offset the cost of how expensive tigers are. Tigers are 6k a stack, and I don't think you can buy them from the vendor. They're, they're crafted. So, if I'm going through a stack every two days, that adds up. At that rate, my current 128,000 will only last me like a month, you know? And so, I do have some income, which offsets it, but... Uh, jugs are kind of an expensive proposition. I've been using them to get by, uh, as a main, but I don't have the attention to 
farm money on this BST really. I mean, I, I could, but it, I mean, it, I, I'm kind of burnt out on fishing right now and I, I'm not getting that much income from, from leveling. Not like I usually do. And so, you know, I, like I have to look at the, the feasibility of buying tiger stacks. I think I have to change my uh, approach from this uh, a little bit if I want to make it in the long run and pay for things uh, that I need to buy, like axes and shields, right? Uh, for, so, so I can keep a good weapon. Uh, oh, speaking of which, I need to go look at axes now that I'm 37 because there might be something else for me now, finally. I don't know. The strength and dex on this axe is actually super fucking good. I doubt there will be a better axe for at least 12 levels or something. There's no way there's anything better than dex 1, I don't think. So, uh, oh, I hate that sound of, like, of, their, of their footsteps. I wish you could turn it off. It makes me think that something bad is happening all the time. Oh, well. Um... Okay, log out. Yeah, go to Westfall. One of the nice things, I will say this. Stopping World of Warcraft is never the worst idea because in the background, your character is just gathering rested XP. So the longer I wait uh, for Season of Discovery, the easier it'll be to level because the fucking, like, the, like the people... Uh, the people... Welcome to my inn, weary traveler. What can I do make for you? It, make it much more annoying than it should be, you know? I have a lot of stuff. Wow. I, like, how did I farm that much okra? <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I have a lot of stuff that I better go, like, fucking go to Stormwind, I guess. Oh, I have a turn in. Let's go do that. Two turn-ins. That's good. Okay, how are we doing here? That's good. Um, we got to get you to Juno. Uh, yeah. Hardcore has a much better, like, alt-tab feel than um, Season of Discovery did. Season of Discovery is a main. Hardcore is a pastime, I think. And it will, it will, it has the better compelling gameplay loop. Well done, adventurer. My scout witnessed your valiant acts. You are proving yourself quite well so far. A band of vicious defias pillagers has been seen vicious plundering the Gold Coast pillagers. quarry, Moonbrook, and the Alexton farmstead. The people's militia will not stand for such behavior. Dispatch such behavior. immediately, adventurer, and make the light's presence Dispatch, known in Westfall. Adventurer. The Gold Coast Quarry is near adventurer. the shore, to the west of the tower. Adventurer. As the next step of your training, I want you to kill 15 of those foul Defias pillagers and 15 Defias looters. Adventurer. Uh, let's go get Signet and a new stack of tigers, and I'm going to start start using them more sparingly to get out of deaths, as opposed to, as opposed to mains. The tigers kill fast, and it's a faster way to level. They kill fast, and they have a nice paralyze, which reduces most of the stress out of leveling, frankly, which is why I burn so many of them so fast. I guess the smart play is to use the tigers to keep growing higher because the higher you go, the easier it is to make money. Also, I'm in the wrong camp now, I think. I'm definitely in the wrong camp. I need to, I need to go somewhere else now. So we'll buy tigers. Um, yeah, buy tigers. Pet food gamma is... 1,000 each. Look, I, I got a food improvement, too. Oh, man, I'm going to sell all these. Uh, or I don't know. Th these are level 24, which is good for 30 content. But I can't store these. I'll have to buy them if I need them. I can't store this. I don't have the fucking room. So, yeah, well, sure. Hey, here's some income. That's good. Like 6K income to pay for a stack of tigers. That's not bad. One, two. Oh, the, the wing sound. Why do I hear a wing sound? Oh, because of the fucking... I hate that. The stupid flapping wing sounds in the MMOs. It's repetitive and shitty and low quality. Uh, um, 
Small hand blade with one agility on it. I'm currently using feral and notched. Yeah. Maybe I should look at... I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm level 13. Yeah. Okay, locations. Da, 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 doc. Uh, I guess I could wait. But, I mean, let, right. like, since I'm Have here, to. I'll look at swords. I, I doubt there's anything there, but... All right, let's sell things. What do we need to sell? We have a sturdy quarter staff worth 14 silver. That'll do better than the disenchant that I, that I would get from it. So, oh, 31, huh? Yeah, if I could sell it, I'll take it. Yeah. Small hand blade for 13, I'll take it. Shield for five silver, we'll disenchant that. Uh, send that one out. Uh, oh, there's something I need to do. I'm going to go to the restroom, and while I'm in the restroom, I will cycle this light leather, which will take about 60 seconds, and I'll be right back. We'll turn on a video while I am gone uh, to distract me, and uh, we will listen to the new Turkey Tom, of which I have already watched 10 minutes of this video, but we'll start it over from the beginning. Uh, the new Turkey Tom, uh, which is about somebody named uh, Airsoft Fatty, the dark side of Airsoft Fatty. This video is new. It has only been out for 21 hours and he has 435,000 views. This is what the internet is watching today. And I was halfway through, but we'll start it over because it's funny. And I'll be right YouTube back. YouTube personality who not only defies the norm, but also thrives on it is Airsoft Fatty. Airsoft Fatty's YouTube channel is essentially a window into his world, and his authenticity resonates with many. Anger is not the way of a jet. <laughs> As a result, he's cultivated a pretty loyal fan base, proving that size isn't everything, despite his extreme physical size. After gaining this following, he would appear on the iDubs documentary Full Force, and eventually the internet reality show Fish Tank, offering him breakout success in his online career. However, there's a shadow that looms over this otherwise heartwarming success story. Despite the colossal opportunities that have come his way, Airsoft Fatty has struggled to keep it together. His journey has been plagued with endless interpersonal conflicts, unscrupulous managers, videos being flagged for various reasons, and false copyright claims that cast a shadow of doubt on his legacy. Today, we'll delve deeper into his past, present, and future to figure out just who Airsoft Fatty truly is, including his dark side. Chris LaFawn was born on April 3, 1997 in Michigan. He hails from Battle Creek, an area that doesn't exactly rank as the most affluent or privileged, with Chris himself growing up relatively poor. In the midst of these early life challenges, Chris's mother emerges as a remarkable figure. From the glimpses that viewers have seen of her, she appeared to be a kind and caring individual who played an instrumental role in guiding Chris through the ups and downs of his early life. Aww. It's no secret that being overweight can often invite cruel remarks and ridicule, making school environments particularly tough for Chris. Yeah, just a lot of things been happening. School. Um, two days ago, my dad's death anniversary came up, so that was a rough day for me. Everything's been going kind of crazy. However, he found solace and an escape from his real life problems on the internet <coughs> instead of posting short YouTube videos. As he gradually My shared grand. his life experiences, he started building a devoted online following that became a source of emotional support and camaraderie. Upon graduating in 2015, Airsoft Fatty made a significant decision. He chose not to pursue a college degree and instead concentrated on making as many YouTube videos as possible. His YouTube <laughs> channel became a canvas for him to express his everyday life in a humorous and entertaining manner. One standout is why I am trying to fix this thing, which has accumulated over 9.5 Oh no Why why no shirt sure. is cuz cuz he wants the world to see he has no shame. He doesn't care. I would never, ever, ever do this if my body looked like that. It would just, it's, it's like wearing a big fuck you sign on your back. It's, it's, it's going to cause every troll in the fucking world to open, to open fire like some kind of nuclear holocaust. You couldn't pay me. 
Hey, cat, would you take a million dollars to take your shirt off? Nope. Does this have a part name, part number on it? No. Does I look like him? No, that might be why, dude. Look. Well, no, it's not that, because that it was shoot with it even further away. So I go up and grab a tool. We can try that, but so maybe in a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of hot and sweaty. What are they burning? Hold up, come here. Well, I have the bolt all the way pulled back. Take your string and push it all the way. Hurry up, they can't hold this position forever. Oh, there's a bug. Yeah, there's definitely something loose in there. I'm tapping it. <laughs> You hear that? Yeah, hold up, hold up. Hold up. I fixed it somehow. And now it'll feed again. Like, never buy a SEMA product. Clearly. Because they're just going to keep fucking breaking down on you. This is definitely more of a plinker than it is a stinker. It really does not shoot. Like not even as close as my C my CQB gun, which only shoots about 300 FPS. This thing shoots so much softer, and they advertised on the page that it was 400. 400 for that piece of crap. Buy a real gun for 400. Buy a real rifle. Why would you pay that much money for a fucking airsoft gun, you idiot? 400 i was i was thinking if he says more than 40 bucks i'll be surprised when he said 400 yeah you deserve what you got hold up bring the camera hey take the camera off and hold it at your stomach when i try something no i'm not going to shoot the gun i'm just clearing it real fast all right, face me. I want to see how this looks on screen. <laughs> Pause it. Five million views since its upload. I want to see how this looks on screen. <laughs> it is a slice of life. One important aspect of Chris's personality is his deep-rooted passion for all things Star Wars. He often expresses his profound love for this iconic franchise, saying, I can easily slip into the lore of it. This statement hits at the therapeutic and hobby-like role Star Wars plays in his life. For him, immersing himself in the expanse of Star Wars universe appears to be a way of escaping the stresses and challenges of the real world. And thankfully, Star Wars, as popular as it is, would serve as a perfect springboard for his own content. These videos feature- He needs a belt. Uh, there's how long till full-blown nudity. Chris enthusiastically wielding toy lightsabers, often engaging in playful duels with friends, or recreating iconic Star Wars scenes. His genuine <laughs> It's like having Jabba the Hug. I'm sorry, I'm doing passion for the <laughs> Jabba's advancing on me with a s with a with a lightsaber. <laughs> it's a bad joke. I didn't mean to make that fat joke. It's at his expense and it's not funny eyes shown through, endearing him to fellow Star Wars enthusiasts and viewers in general. While lightsabers were an integral part of Chris's content, the Chug Jug video was equally instrumental in catapulting him into the limelight. Shrinking Fortnite shield in real life. Okay. I'll bite. I don't know why I'm biting, but I'll bite. Drinking Fortnite. Did he even spell? Oh my god. Drinking Fortnite shield in real life. Oh no. Oh no. Drink shield real fast. 10 million views. Fast in Fortnite. And we have our shield juice, full mug. This is about the equivalent of a medium shield. So let's uh, chug this. Ha! 
How the fuck did you drink that that fast? That is disgusting. I thought I was bad. Be back. I can't, and I don't want to. You have one, sir. You have one obesity. Put on a medium shield. So let's uh, chug this. You sly devil. These particular videos serve as catalysts, propelling his channel into a massive growth surge and causing ripples across the vast sea of the internet, particularly within the Instagram meme community. He also loves to sing. What's in your head? In your head, yeah. Zombie, zombie, zombie. And not just that, Airsoft Fatty is... See, I'm like that, but I'm actually hitting the notes. He's a man of many talents. Chris's love for cooking is something he often shares with his... Family. And the inflection, and the volume, and the control, and the fucking... Like, the, the execution, the anger, the emotion, all that stuff. Fans. Amid his diverse content, he occasionally shares videos of him preparing various... Z Zombie is a very angry song. Original recipes. You throw them in with the other meat. That woman drank her. That woman is a fucking hero, a heroine. And I loved her to death. Her name was uh, Dolores. Ooh, I forget her last name, but it's her name is Dolores. And uh, she drank herself to death. She was fucked up. She was like a lesbian and mistreated and had a lot of issues and probably a child of rape, I would imagine. Definitely a depressive alcoholic and, and heroin addict and definitely drank herself to death. And I, and when I sing zombie, it's a lot different than that scrub singing zombie. Cause I've been singing zombie since I was like 13. And that song is particularly about a, a rather bad massacre in Ireland. As I remember kind of like bloody Sunday and it is not some meme like i mean let's go look at the wiki that song is not some fucking meme and i don't like I, I don't like it when they try and turn it into one you look at cranberry zombie what the what what this was about you know uh it's it, it's i it, yeah the, um Dolores O'Rourden. Yeah, there she is. Rest in peace. I love you, babe. I'm sorry you didn't make it. I didn't win. I, I, I lost the war, too. I've lost the war in my lifetime, too. I was able to walk away. God had a plan for me or whatever the fuck you believe in. God did not have a plan for her. She did not walk away from it. One day I'm going to lose the war, too. She lost the war. She lost the war. Uh... So the yeah zombie uh, zombie was about the troubles which was uh, a conflict in Northern Ireland that lasted 30 years from the 60s until the until the the year, the year 1998 and it's the Northern Ireland Ireland, uh, Ireland conflict or the irregular war or the low level war it was primary political and nationalistic fueled by historical events uh, uh, you know, despite the, the, the terms Protestant and Catholic to refer to its two sides, it's, it was a religious war between Protestants and Catholics in, in Ireland. It's not some fucking meme song for some kid. It actually had fucking meaning. It means something, you know? It would be the same as if I wrote a song about the Civil War, about how bad it is to fight our brothers, and then somebody sang it on a fucking YouTube meme. It's a little different for me, that song. <sighs> Irish civil rights. To him, it's just a, a good song. To me, it's somebody's blood, pain, sweat, and tears. And I sing it with the inflection that it that is due. There's a difference. That shit. One who mourns the loss of, of brothers in a civil war. You know what I'm saying? I've lost all my Republican friends. Don't talk to them. Don't hang out with them. A very tasteful glimpse into his cult. I would kill them in war if I could. I don't believe in what they believe. 
culinary endeavors, often featuring unique and unconventional recipes. While traditional cooking channels may focus on gourmet dishes or expert technique, Chris's approach is refreshingly unpretentious. This video featuring Chris's ramen noodle preparation is a prime example of his distinct culinary style. Rather than adhering to... I do this shit too, but the difference is I'm not proud of it. Conventional cooking norms. <laughs> I don't I don't fucking advertise it. His emphasis on making the noodles nice and throw some blue cheese and in, in on top of some half cooked ramen noodles with some uh some cheese crumbles, parmesan and uh breadcrumbs or whatever, you know? In uh in the bottom of the of the loaf of bread. You know, there's some breadcrumbs in the bottom of the bread bag. Toss that into my ramen with some blue cheese and you know, I do this shit too, but I'm not fucking proud of it, and I don't show you guys. As a distinct twist to the dish, which others have failed to replicate. Brb, I gotta get something to drink. Water. I like my noodles to be a little dry. One notable upload would feature a dish that he holds near and dear to his heart, and it's often revered for its low cost, being under five dollars. Chris takes a microwavable TV dinner and makes the unusual choice to dump it into a pot of ramen noodles with the water still in it, and then mixes it all together before enjoying. Here's where TV dinner comes to play. His willingness to embrace the unconventional, experiment with flavors, and maintain an unfiltered authenticity in his cooking resonates with a particular subset of viewers who appreciate his unique approach. One meal he showcases often is known as meat salad, which consists of cut up chicken, hot dogs, deli turkey, shredded taco cheese, baked beans, and barbecue sauce. He then puts the salt in the microwave and eats it with a smile. Now, your salad should look like this. A diseased mess of meat. Something a vegetarian yep. and vegan. Done it. Cry over. Oh yeah. There's so many animals have died. Done it. Not proud well, of obviously it. Obviously, this meal looks super delicious. Not advertising it. I mean, foul and not safe for humans. Maybe, maybe girl repellent is 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 cool and attractive and fun for you or something, but girl repellent is the opposite of my fucking vibe. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you want to advertise to the world that you eat garbage. I do not. By, by any metric if you want to know what happens when you eat this every day for like 20 years well you're looking at it but regardless the response from his audience it's it's video. like a culture of people who appreciate each other's bad habits and it's frankly based it's based it's based it's a culture of people that reward each other for their bad habits and i'm sorry i felt shame for my bad habits all my life I still do. I feel shame that I smoked heroin. I feel shame that I smoked methamphetamine. I feel shame that I did every drug under the, under you know under the under the under the sun. And I'm ashamed that I, I attempted to be a drug dealer and a credit card thief. And I'm you know ashamed that I attempted so many things in my life. I'm ashamed that I've been on as many high speed chases as I've been in. I'm ashamed uh, of my fat body. I'm ashamed of my alcoholism i'm ashamed of my love life i'm ashamed that i let the woman that i love walk away from me because of someone else i mean i'm i'm you know not because of competition but because somebody threatened to kill her and i let her go and i should have fought for her and i feel a lot of shame in my life uh and these guys it's like they're proud of it and I'm sorry, I'm trying constantly to be a better person and not not engage in the things that I used to be and not be not have a fat body and, and not, you know, be this slovenly airsoft fatty type person. I'm sorry, but I just, you know relatability and shared experiences chris's approach to i am not proud that the love of my life is gone and I didn't cause that to happen, but I didn't fight for it either. I am not proud that I lost the war. I'm not proud of all the relapses. I'm not proud of my country. I'm not proud of the political system. I'm not proud of the prison industrial complex and my part that I played in it. I'm not proud that my city tried to fucking falsely accuse me of seven false assault charges and that I didn't scream about it to the media. I just let them do it. I was too high. To scream about it to the media, I just let them do it to me over and over again, and I defeated all seven, too. At least they let me walk, or I'd be in jail right now. I wouldn't be talking to you, you know? His audience enjoys a comfy viewing experience watching an obese man from Michigan prepare a meal that the state legally can't feed to murderers and...
like this. While a lot of people watch this stuff in a tongue-in-cheek way, there were genuine fans who just wanted to see his personality thrive. Yeah. He was a genuine guy sharing his Yeah, he's stars, not a liar. Singing, mm -hmm. funny moments from his life, nope. cooking. Just like me, I would say I'm that. genuine. Lightsaber yeah. videos were, in many ways, symbolic of Chris's entire channel. It was just a guy... I like my MMOs. I like my drinking. I like my hashish. I know I'm supposed to feel shame about those things, but I don't. I like my family. I like, you know, I, I like most of the things about my life or I would change them. You know, and the things that I don't like about my life, I'm changing very, 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 very slowly. Like poverty. I don't know. Like, I don't, I guess you could call it sexlessness, but I mean, I could go get laid tonight. There's nothing stopping me. Go right on down to that. Honestly, you know what's stopping me is myself. I can go right on down to that fucking bar tonight and come back with a woman. Trust me, it's never been an issue for me. You buy him a drink. You tell him a joke. You tell him what you do. You tell him that you're on your way back and you find somebody with the same body type as you. And it's pretty easy to bring a woman home. I've done it a lot, you know. So I, I choose not to do this because A, it, it's a commitment that I can't get into B, it's not very classy to just one night stand. C, I don't need a bar fly or some girl hunting for, for a relationship to make myself happy. D, it's not conducted to my career. And, and E, I don't want to complicate my life any further than it already is. And, and I think those are a lot of made up, dreamed up reasons to, to just not engage with people. But they're real, and I think they're a lot more real than his reasons, which is that he's fat and lazy. I have real issues. Like, for instance, to bring a woman home, it would be a security thing for my family, the dogs, the guns. Getting her to walk back here would be kind of crazy, you know, because it's a bit of a walk. You know, it's, it's just kind of crazy. It's like, oh, am I going to follow you into the backwoods now kind of thing? It, you know, I've, I've real verifiable women, like reasons I don't bring women here, but I've never had an issue bringing women here. You know, there's real, like real verifiable. Like I've got to get her past the security checkpoints is my main reason why I don't go chase women right now in my, in my life. I would have to bring them. I would have to show my mother that I'm having loose sex. You know, I would have to show my family the woman. And that's unfair to her, and that's unfair to me, and that's one of the reasons why I'm sexless right now, is I literally have to get a woman past the security checkpoints. It's like the real reason, too. I would have to show her to my family, and that is something that I don't wish to do. It's one of the reasons why I always stayed single. It's why I always lived alone. I never brought women home when I lived with my mother because I didn't want her to know how much of a man whore I actually am. And, you know, I, I just, you know... And these are real verifiable reasons why there's not a girl sitting next to me right now. You know what I'm saying? For him, it's because he's fat and lazy. You know? Different reasons. A few of these videos going viral, Chris has gone from just another content creator to a small time sensation. And all of his videos did relatively well for a time. It's rare to see someone get 500,000 views on a video. It's even rarer for that to be a 25 minute long yep. unedited meat salad tutorial. One of the most obvious chapters in Airsoft Fatty's life centers on his battle with obesity. At one point, his weight posed a severe threat to his health, leading to heart At one point, dire consequences. His doctors issued a warning. That did have consequences. You can see weight. them. However, his endless consumption You can see the consequences consequences who has yet to cease <sighs> for being honest his weight has probably contributed to why he's so iconic today i'm well, fat but i'm not bad like him don't like got that double chin like, like that you so know the unwanted mm -mm. attention from trolls he found himself attracting a certain audience that included individuals who derived amusement from belittling him often targeting mm -hmm. him due to his weight chris had to grapple with these negative aspects of his journey in the online sphere it's clear that at some point yep. chris has had a very unhealthy relationship with his audience the first time i got called fat on my stream i tilted the camera I said, yep. Oh, yeah. Fatty, fat, fat, fat. Oh, yeah. Go right ahead. Hit me with it. Attack me for 10 years. I'm fat, please. And that's called confidence. It's something that all these other people don't have. I've got it all my life. And it never stopped me from getting laid. It never stopped me from having good jobs or having good life. Whatever, you know. It's to each of their own. And uh, I wasn't fat my whole life either. I was like skinny until I was like 20 and uh, 24, I think. And uh, I just, you know, uh, I have never, never, ever let an insult get to me. 
my issue is is arrogance because once somebody opens the the floodgates of an attack calling me fat or a loser or kind of too high or a druggie or something like that right or a criminal the, at that point they've opened the floodgate and then i can sh and then i can fire shots and they learn very quickly not to fuck with me because then i just straight up impeccably destroy you in front of an entire room or or whatever and and this is why i don't get insulted a lot because people people know that i'm basically like it like an unhinged like holy hand grenade that never stops exploding and then they really don't want to be my target trust me they know it in real life they know it online everybody knows it they don't want to be my target they don't want to trust me when he was sick at one point he posted a video begging for his audience to respond because he wasn't able to leave the house at the time he expresses desperation for any kind of interaction wanting a sense of belonging is of course no I really don't under, under, I don't understand how somebody with 500,000 fucking subscribers is desperately fucking lonely. You did that to yourself. At that point, you could go on down to like New York. You could live in Greenwich Village with your 500,000 subscribers watching you change your life or whatever. You could go on down to the bar on the corner and trust me, there are some really wonderfully beautiful women on this planet who find personality and success attractive. And if, if you have 500,000 subs, that is attractive to some beautiful women. Trust me. And if you, if you are lonely and fucked up with 500,000 fucking subscribers, you did that to yourself. That is not their fault. That's not the world's fault. You did that to yourself. With 500,000 subscribers, you should not be shit-cold lonely. I don't really understand that. That's because you are a shit-cold lonely person in general. That is not because, you know, not because you don't have the possibility of changing it. It's because you want to be lonely. But it's clear that at points, Chris was too dependent. Do you have any idea what 500,000 subscribers is like? It's like liquid panty remover. They don't care what you look like. When they see that kind of success, that's like saying, oh, I'm a, I'm a pretty successful Hollywood star, but I can't get anybody to hang out with me. I mean, that is what it is. It's like, I mean, it's, that's basically what it is. It's like, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no metaphor here. That's exactly what it is. You're basically a Hollywood star with no friends and it makes, and it makes no sense. Should you have been a Hollywood star then? Probably not because it makes no fucking sense. Now, you know, as I recall, he actually did have a lot of friends, I need but they didn't like him. Words, acknowledgement that people are still watching. I think the 500,000 subscribers is an acknowledgement, and I think you're blind. It's a simple view. I need people to talk. I think you're desperate because you like being fat and lazy, and it's not a good look, and that's why no one will hang out with you. On the internet, I can't go out and Desperation is not a good look. Now, you come at it with some fucking confidence. You know, confidence is, is a stain that you can't wipe off, you know? It is. It's like like when you're an actually confident person, you it's like a stain that you can't that, that, it's, that you can't wipe off. It, that's a, that's a little Wayne quote, but I mean it's true. Like when you're an actually confident person, it's it's like it's like a it's like a suit that you can't take off. You're you're just actually that way. This is not a confident person, so that's why he has no friends, and it sucks. It sucks. I don't know why you got those 500,000 subscribers. I don't believe Turkey Tom does either. I don't know why you I don't know why you had this success. You got lucky. You, you got the algorithm somehow. Many also speculated that But I don't know how somebody with 500,000 fucking subs can't fill his house with people. You know? I like honestly like I was looking forward to that part of my career if I ever had a career doing this. I was like if I ever make 500,000 or a million subs or whatever, I'm going to move downtown to a major m metropolitan city and I'm going to hang out with the fucking people at the bar. You know what I'm saying? Like I've, I've, I've there was I had no illusions about reaching success and what it would do to my social life, which is like you have to do stuff with people. It's not like you can't. Yeah, it's, you can't. When you're this successful and this popular, you have to do stuff with people. It's not a, you, you have to go to TwitchCon. You have to go downtown, you know? Fake and Chris was just begging for attention. So I mean, Asmongold gets away with it 
uh, not doing it, but even he goes and does the Steak and Cheese podcast. I mean, like, you know, there's stuff that he has to do. OMG. But there really is no way to know. And they needed they needed Steak and Cheese for his image. You know, if he kept living that, that I'm trapped in the attic troll, you know, fucking my mother died and I'm still acting the same way kind of thing 10 years later thing, they had to balance him. Uh, against somebody like a Miru and Tectone who are obviously social butterflies. And, you know, and I don't, you know, I don't, uh, you know, I, b- I believe Amiru and Tectone live with Mizkif. As, as, as I recall, Mizkif probably keeps that entire house entirely full of women. If I had to, if I, you know, if I, if I had to guess and not just women, but, but, but good people period. And that's one of the reasons why being Mizkif's friend and living with Mizkif probably is, is a really good deal, especially for somebody like Amiru. And I don't know, uh, you know, and it's weird because, you know, and I'm, I'm trying not, I'm not trying to draw co- co- like, 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 like uh, correlations between this guy and, and those people. I'm just saying like, it's not possible to reach 500,000 subscribers and not have a social life. I, the only reason, the only way that you attained that is because you tanked it and made it hard on purpose. It is like, literally you are going to receive so many friend requests and so many texts and so many invitations and come to TwitchCon with us and your family famous and etc come 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 make us fame more famous than we already are and all this other stuff right trust me it's very hard to keep the social butterflies away from you when you when you are popular it is i, I know because i've been there and like you know like i was the most popular kid in my school i, I was i was home homecoming king i like i i i, I, I when, when my girlfriend and i danced at prom we had a spotlight i mean i'm serious about this shit from g dubs of all places it was insane i sang for five thousand people at the magnus arena because i was popular i was the least singer in a band you can't get away from it you, you know you now i didn't like that life and I, I chose to not live a life like that but i mean i've lived it before and i know what it is and and, and, and trust me if you are alone with these kind of numbers it's because of your brain it's not because of the people you want to blame the people i need you i need you all this sick sad stuff about i need your attention and i I need validation and all this crap yeah you're just crazy you're a comedian comedians uh, to quote julia louis dreyfus when she was talking about seinfeld he's a comedian they're all crazy and they all have mommy issues and they're all all alcoholics and they all sleep sleep around too much and that's exactly right that's i mean trust me and but 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 that's the opposite of what you are because you're you're not really you're 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 not really not good for your mental to feel like you need your comments you have the same mental issues of a comedian but you don't but you're not one to talk about you to feel like a real person but for the time being even with chris's detractors taking issue with his over embellishment and speculating on his health complications he still had an audience and the notoriety he gathered so far would only be boosted by his biggest break to date i love the star wars theme of this stupid shit Wars, a 50 minute long documentary on the life and times of chris lafon in april 2019 ian or idubs made the journey to michigan to shoot a video with chris delve into chris's life his friendships his motivations and provide an intimate exploration of the enigmatic personality the documentary so something that i struggle with my 600 pound lifestyle people is there's this point where life would be so hard that I couldn't, I've never been this fat and I've never, never even come close to this fat. Not even now I'm tall and I'm six foot four. So it's a lot harder for me to get fat. It's like a lot harder. You know, when you're super tall, it's really fucking hard to get fat. You can get fat, but it's, 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 it, but it doesn't cause you issues like this because he, he's, he's also short. He's like five foot eight, something like that. So when you're shorter and you get rounder, it becomes much harder for you to do things. One of the ways I was able to be fat all my life is I'm extremely pretty tall. Like my dad was six foot seven. I'm six foot four. I come from, from tall stock and my mother is very short. She's like five foot five or something like that. And she's getting, she's getting shorter, but, uh, like, you know, but, but, but my father's blood had tall people in it. All his brothers were, were at least six foot two, all of them. And he had seven brothers, and all of them were six foot, six foot two. My dad was crazy, and he's six foot. He, he's dead, but he, he was six foot seven. He scared the shit out of me when I was seven years old, and I, I've, I've had PTSD issues with it my entire life because it was like having Andre the Giant, giant, fucking stomp you in. When, when my father knocked me up into the wheel well when I was like seven because I wasn't shoveling the snow fast enough or whatever his fucking reason was, it terrorized me for a few minutes because he was that angry. He kind of lost it, 
it was like being attacked by Andre the Giant and laid out. And I haven't been afraid of cops since then. I haven't been afraid of high speed chases. I wouldn't be afraid of jumping out of planes. That that fear of having that giant come at me like he was going to kill me when I was seven. It was crippling. It changed me. It, I mean, it was. It was. It was like having Andre the Giant come at you, like he was gonna kill you. And I was. I at that time, I was seven years old. I was like seventy pounds or something. I was. I don't know. Four feet tall, maybe three foot six, something like that. And this man, who's literally triple my size in in every way, comes knocking me up into a wheel well and screaming in my face and shit and this was formative for me it changed my life I've, I've never been afraid of anything since then it was the most terrorized i've ever been and i've never had i don't have proper fear effects with people and all this stuff and and, and so my thing is it's like being tall like my father my whole fucking life i got fat too and i'm still fat i'm 300 and i don't know 16 pounds they, they weighed me yesterday and i think it was 316 I, like last year i was 387 pounds now i'm 316 pounds i'm losing the weight but it still doesn't change the fact that when you're this big it makes life so not fun that you get depressed all the time like watching him pick up stuff off the ground depresses the fuck out of me because what like like there's this point where this would be so unpleasant that you would want to change and you would stop eating and stop acting like like so lazy about it and you would go out walking and you would try to change it like i do uh but i don't see that here i don't see the desire it's like his his ability to muscle his way through being this fat is stronger than his ability to lose the weight like he he rather soldier through like this than just go walking and, and fix it areas of Chris's home, which had only served as background settings in his videos until that point. Oh like less my feeling... god, disgusting. You know what that shit is on the floor, right? Site. Much of the house appeared neglected, displaying signs of disrepair, and there was an overwhelming presence of cat feces. Why do you guys live like this? Fucking disgusting. Now, my house has gotten dirty because I, I had the flop house. Ten people drinking, you know, on a Saturday night will leave six full full fucking uh, cigarette ashtrays, uh, burn holes on the sofa, empty bottles everywhere, kids passed out on the fucking floor, kids puking in the bathroom and shit and like in, in your house is a wreck because you have a frat house for 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 a, an apartment you have a frat house for an i had i had a, a frat house for an apartment for for eight years there was never any time when there wasn't at least five people in my apartment at any given time like at, at any given time i don't remember i don't remember ever being alone in my apartment not once in eight years not once i remember having just the place to me and a girl that's it though and uh so you know so living like this i don't know if it's forced on you because you have the flop house and 10 people come over to your house all the time that's one thing this is one person living in a fucking like a shitty cesspit and i've never understood it and i'm not even a particularly clean person either i'm disorganized i like disorder in my life because my mother's ocd so my my defense against ocd is is disorganization because if you have an ocd person sweeping through your life fixing everything all the time you like disorder you know but what i don't like is filth never lived in filth the only filth i've ever engaged in is dirty dishes in the sink not outside of them you know Perhaps the most notorious area was the basement, resembling less of a typical storage space and more of a, like a landfill, a literal landfill and more akin to a decrepit mental institution the yeah. existence <laughs> or a decrepit mental institution was better. Yeah. Excrement in this area turned it into a oh. zone, resembling a minefield of sorts. During Ian's interview Disgusting. with Chris regarding the house's condition, Chris admitted that it could benefit from some form of renovation and cleaning, albeit he downplayed the urgency of the situation. Ian yeah, because, you know, it, they the downplay it because you know what their plan is? Eventually letting the house get so shitty that they condemn it and buying a new one, except they don't have the money to buy a new one. That's their actual plan. That's why they let their, that's like, that's what they think in the back of their mind. I guarantee it. Those weird hoarders that let their house get like this. In the back of their mind, they're thinking, eh, I'll just move it all somewhere else eventually and get a new house. Yeah, with what money? You're a hoarder. Consequently, the state of the house was temporarily brushed aside, leaving it as is for the time being. Just a few steps away, you can relax and soak up some rays in the sunroom. Jesus! 
How many cats do you have, and why do you need like five pounds of cat litter in that huge cat box? Cats don't need a box that big, and 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 of course they're gonna splash it all over the fucking floor if there's that much litter. They probably think it's fun. It's like you know when 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 kids go down to the fucking like to to build sandcastles at the beach or play in the sandbox or whatever. The cat probably thinks it's fun to just like toss the litter all over the room because it probably is to the cat. It's probably fun. So that when the cat's like taking a shit, it's like digging because it's fun because you have so much litter in that fucking box that the cat's like blah 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 and digging and have fun with it. You know, there's no reason to have a cat box that big unless you have too many cats. If you have too many cats you have a huge cat box like that if you have a huge cat box huge cat like box like that trust me i've been there the cats just knock all the litter on the floor and take shits on the floor because they think the litter in in the, in the box is the same as the litter on the floor because it is so then they start taking shits on the floor because there's litter on the floor why would you have that huge box it's it's like this lack of critical thinking that got you in this situation you know like one thing i think my mother taught me fairly well is like whenever I do something, whenever I go somewhere, and my best friend is like this too. He has an old saying that I still still say to this day, like every time I get on stream or whatever, I say, uh, spectacles, spectacles, tes testicles, wallet, and watch, right? Because you don't want to leave the house without those things. Spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. And that's an old thing my best friend used to say, and I really love that. Spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. And if you don't have those four things, you, you, you're going to have a bad time. So, and watch means cell phones, glasses mean jacket, you know, spectacles, testicles, like, like, do you have, like, are, do you, are you yourself leaving the house kind of thing? Like, you know, like everything that you need. And my mother taught me something else, like two things that really stuck with me. The first one is, is manner, manners are God's money. But the other thing is, is, is where are you going? What are you doing? Keep your mind on what you're doing. Focus and make sure that you don't have to do two trips. Cause I have Asperger's and I have, a, I have a, I have a, I live in, you know, I, my head's in the clouds all the time. Right. So I'm like a fairly space cadet person, especially cause I'm stoned all my life and everything too. And so I'm like a fairly space cadet person. I'm, li I'm liable to forget my wallet, watch spectacles and testicles. You know, I'm, I'm liable to forget those things. So my mother taught me this style all my life that while I'm not that good at it in real life, I'm definitely pretty good at it, good, good at it in the video games, which is when I buy the box, when I buy like, so, so if my mother were to do this same exact thing, if she had 10, 10 cats, she's going to think about how many boxes there are. She's going to think about what size the box is. She's going to think about the placement of another box next to it. She's going to think about what's, what's going to happen with the floor. She's going to put something under the floor. And now I never liked this about her because it, you know, it, it, it makes it incredibly possible like incredibly hard to get anything done because she's a completionist when it comes to re the real world she's like a completionist a perfectionist an ocd person that will not let anything in the house be out of order or, or, or disheveled or anything like that at all and and so i rebelled against this of course because she's my mother but see the problem is i do see sometimes the reasons that she is the way that she is because a good diligent well-planned not slovenly mind never would have set up a situation like this to fail and while picking the wrong litter box and putting another box next to it and putting five pounds of litter in it which is extremely expensive by the way cat litter is not cheap uh in all this that you don't need to do and not scooping it enough or buying some kind of tool that'll scoop it for you at the very least or whatever like you are setting yourself up for this if you set yourself up for this and I, and, I, and I grew up with cats i mean this happened to us if you set yourself up for this you are going to lose your house and so that and, and, and so my mother's style of of you know being completionist about everything that you do like if you're if you're taking a trip upstairs you think about what what to carry with you and it used to drive me crazy until i was like 25 i used to actively fight her on it but by 25 i began to realize the the job is just much harder if you don't if you don't think first, if you don't prep first, if you don't make all, make sure you have all the tools to get it done first. If you don't, you know, if you're going upstairs, bring something with you so you don't have to go downstairs to pick something up and bring it back upstairs again. Take it with you when you're going. It's the, it's the, it's the 
ten, tenants of a busy mind and a busy life. It's it's like the, you know, it's the feng shui. It's it's the execution of being a real person. You don't let situations get like this, or you lose your house. And while it might not seem like like right now, it's just litter on the floor. But in the end, you'll lose your house if, if they if they coat the house in urine because everywhere is the litter box. Now that will ruin the foundations of your house and you will lose a hundreds of thousands of dollars investment. And who's going to bail you out? Is, is mommy going to come buy you a new house? Is is the bank going to come buy you a new house? No, they're going to be like, oh, sir, it's six hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a new house. Uh, that'll be six hundred and fifty thousand smackers now. And, and, and the fat slovenly let the litter box like, you know, flow all over the house. Uh, person loses his five hundred thousand dollar investment that he didn't even pay for and his parents lose their house and this is why we take the trash out this is why we don't buy big litter boxes this is why we don't ever let them shovel it onto the ground this is why we put stuff underneath it we don't make it seem like litter box land so they play in it like a fucking sandbox or whatever you just keep it small and keep it contained and keep it well scooped and and, and don't have cats if you can't and so there's a reason why i don't have a cat a cat right now is because i'm unliable to stop streaming to scoop the box you know what i'm saying so I don't keep cats like him. And I love I love cats. I really want a cat. The, I, 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 I want a cat almost as bad as I want a woman, you know? But I don't have the discipline for a woman right now. I don't have the discipline to pay attention to a woman right now. I don't have the discipline to pay attention to a cat right now. And I don't have the discipline to scoop the boxes. So I just don't get myself in those situations. It is weird because... The laziness of the person should dictate that he just doesn't have cats because he's so lazy that he knows he's not going to scoop the box, which obviously he is too lazy. He, he, he obviously is too lazy to scoop the box. It's the, the, the evidence is right here. So the, another tenant tenant of people with good habits is that you don't commit to things that you can't make commitments for. Like if you're too lazy to scoop the box, don't have a cat. And when people go, Skycat, your name is Skycat. Why don't you have a cat? I say, oh, I wouldn't be able to. I, I mean, I, I don't have a girlfriend because I wouldn't have time or interest in going out on dates right now. I wouldn't want to do movie night with a girl right now. That would mean stopping my stream. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. So I don't keep a girlfriend and I don't go hunting for one either. And I don't go breaking some girl's heart by saying yes or, or any of the other stupid shit that I could have done over, over the last like five invites that I had over the last two years. I say no, because I'm like, no, I, I know that I do not have the commitment i don't have the commitment uh, ability i don't have the commitment commitment the the people bill money or the commitment currency or whatever the fuck you want to call it uh to have a girlfriend or to have to to to, to like to welcome a girlfriend or a cat into my life right now i know i don't have the discipline so i don't bite off more than i can chew like this guy's doing and end up contaminating your house and losing your house and that's how I, and, and that's why my parents trusted me enough to let me have a piece of property on their, on their, on, on their land, because they know I'm not going to wreck the house. They know I'm not going to shoot guns off and scare people. They know I'm not going to tra tra traipse, uh, loose women through here all the time. They know I'm not going to fuck up. They know I'm not going to keep too many cats and let the litter and the shit get all over the floor. They know I'm not going to do this because I'm, I'm not known for doing these things. You know, I'm not, I'm not, it, it, it's not something I'm very, very known for doing. I'm not known. I'm not known for mistreating women. I'm not known for, for, for uh, making commitments like cats and, and not taking care of them or, or scooping their boxes. I'm not known for that. I'm known for being there for people when they need me to be there and not, not when they not, you know, and not when they don't. So, you know, this thing about discipline it's not like he needs more discipline. It's weird. He should let the laziness dictate the situation. So the laziness in him is just as strong as mine is. And it's weird because the lazy will guide you. If the laziness dictates that you're not going to scoop the box, then don't then 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 embrace the laziness and don't keep cats. And also, don't get yourself in commitments like, what am I going to do with the cats if I can't, if I real, if I come to some epiphany where I realize that I'm not going to scoop that box and it's going to cost me my house? 
when you come to that epiphany what are you going to do are you going to dump the 10 cats that you have on somebody no and that's what he did too as i recall he, he dumped all his cats on somebody and that's is that and, and that's not okay either and so you don't keep and, and that's the other thing you don't get in a relationship if you know you don't have the commitment because that's going to break the person's heart and they're going to hate you and they're going to cheat on you and make your life hell and, and, and live in your house and be unhappy and, and and that's why i don't do commitments a lot like recently either because i just know i don't have i know the laziness of my heart and i know that i that i'm not likely to to do well with the commitment and i'm not liable to, to pay attention to them right now the only thing i care about is my stream so and he had the same exact issue so i mean you know and, and this is different so i don't bite off things that i can't chew i don't keep cats that i'm not going to scoop the box for i don't keep women around that i'm not going to pay attention to i don't keep people around that i'm not going to be friends with i don't you know i'm not going to you know i don't go seeking relationships that i don't have the time interest or even the, the, the discipline to 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 treat well so i've just basically exited all of my friendships now because and they know why they know i'm just too lazy and i just don't do commitments and i can't do commitments to be friends with them they all know it i told my friend just recently i'm not going to my best friend's wedding and i told and i made him promise not to tell my best friend and i didn't go to my best friend's wedding and i didn't tell him that i wasn't going either until afterwards because you know and and and, and he knows why I, i'm just too lazy and too shitty to make the commitments to real people in my life i don't have it in me to pay the people bills to even my mother much less anybody else i just don't have it i'm the most selfish lazy person that you'll ever fucking meet i just really am i'm not a good person so that's the difference i don't go around these problems i don't have these problems like 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 the first thing that i said when my mother was like i bought you a house <laughs> like after i was like you bought me a house you know and she was like yes i used your money that we saved up and i bought a house and i was like okay she didn't even ask me she just did it she was like i, I fixed your biggest problem which is rent and i was like okay thank you i love you I, I own a house now and she was like yes you own a house now she didn't tell me first she just did it and she was like i solved your biggest problem and i was like thank you thank you i have no no regrets you did solve my biggest problem and then i moved into my house and i became the happiest person you'll ever meet i just did i was like wow i own a house now i don't have to deal with landlords or rent or or dealing drugs or bullshit or any judgment or or, or, or evictions or anything like that ever again i own my house I, you know i live in this motherfucker this is mine i own this i have the deed it's in, in my name i'm bona fide I, I'm, I'm, I'm a homeowner and what this did to my life is obvious I'm so happy and I had such a better situation in life but you know I still don't go around making commitments like this I still don't even with a better life and and okay when when she told me that I, I was a homeowner the next thing that I said after that is I laughed kind of bitterly at her and I said well who's gonna clean it <laughs> <laughs> and she was like well i thought about that <laughs> and she was like my friend has engaged to clean your house for years and she'll come every two weeks three weeks four weeks whatever we need and she'll always be happy for the money and she's always going to look out for us and she's a family friend and she's going to clean the house for you and i was like really and she was like, I know you won't do it. I know you're trying to be something that you, you know, that, that takes too much of your time. She was like, I know what your plan is. I know you're too lazy and, and too shitty to clean your house. So I'm going to help you with it. And I'm going to have a maid come in a maid. I mean, she's family friend, but I'm going to have a maid come in every two to four weeks and make sure that you don't live in a fucking like a, a sty like this. And she was like, I love this house and I renovated this house and I painted it for you and I made it for you. And I, and this is my gift to you as your mother. And I will not let you fucking destroy this this thing that we worked so hard on and i was like okay i'm a gamer i'm gonna sit there do nothing be fat and lazy and, and on top of it i'm a gamer with an obsession which is becoming a streamer so i'm not gonna pay attention to you i'm not gonna fucking pay attention to the house i'm not gonna clean the house i'm gonna work i told her right up front like before i ever even moved here i am gonna work 14 hours a day and, and do nothing but that for years and years and years and years and she was like that sounds wonderful you've never done that before and i was, I was like yeah i've worked but i never worked 14 hours a day for years on end no i was always did like you know part-time jobs or if i did full-time it was because i had an apartment and I, I had to you know and so like i had to i had to pay rent and you know and she was like trust me i covered all this i've even got a maid for you she was like we're gonna make sure your house doesn't turn into a sty she, and, th and this is the difference right when you have 
500,000 fucking subscribers when you have iDubs TV who has 7 million subscribers doing a tour of your house for some kind of fucked up like YouTube generation version of MTV Cribs or whatever or or some deep dive into a fucking streamer if you have this kind of money and this kind of fucking interest you call somebody to come clean your fucking house but this guy's too lazy to do even that you want to tell me 500,000 subscribers isn't at least a million dollars I guarantee it is and you know what we pay my friend to clean my house? It's it's like 20 bucks an hour for two hours a month. We, we pay her like 40 bucks a month. What's the budget on that? That's that's 12, you know, for, for my end of it. My mother uses her for her house too, so she makes more than that. But we pay her 20 bucks an hour. It takes her two hours to turn this place over. It's 40 bucks a month. What is that? That's, that's like, you know, and trust me, there's maid services across the land that will charge you like 40 bucks an hour for two hours and they will deep clean your fucking house and they don't care what, what's in it cash shit or any of that stuff they don't care about that so, so like trust me dude like like a good person this is my problem with it it's not not the it's not the fatness and the laziness that the trolls went after it's the discipline to pick up a phone and call a maid who would very much like to take your money and fix your house it's 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 the laziness deep inside of your heart that that, that led you to this place here that we're looking at for for half an hour and I, did, I didn't live a life like that. I never did and I never will. And it's not, and, and trust me, I'm la way lazier than this guy. Way, 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 way lazier. This guy's willing to go outside and play with his airsoft guns. I'm not willing to do that even. You know what I'm saying? So I'm way, way lazier than this guy, but but I don't have a bad life like him. You know? What do you call this room? I call this um, the cat box. The entire room is a, is a cat box. Room for a bit. I sleep in here and I breathe the I breathe the shit fumes. And then it kind of got turned into a random shit room. And then it became a cat room. He's a hoarder on top of it. Why does he have a fucking grocery cart full of random shit in his living room? Like I mean, he's a hoarder. Every so often mother and grandma tend these litter boxes. They don't tell me when to leave or else they'll In addition to exploring the depths of they do tell you you've tuned it out you have tuned out them telling you how bad it is each day and you've forgotten that they were were telling you each day trust me women will tell you when it's got bad over and over and over and over and over again they're never like like trust me those women never stop telling you how bad it is you tune them out see to magnify certain events or anecdotes a trait quickly picked up by ian when confronted about this inclination chris adamantly denied exaggerating anything firmly asserting his commitment to honesty stating that lying held no purpose for him yeah However, chris's mother held a different viewpoint recognizing the falsehood in his claims yet quietly appreciating that facet of her son perhaps finding amusement in the tales he spun yeah. interestingly it appears that chris himself might not fully grasp the extent of his exaggerations when recounting stories indicating a subconscious inclination towards embellishment that seems inherent to his storytelling process process my storytelling process is the truth because at any given time one of my 700 friends could come into my stream and dispel any fucking lie that i tell because i actually have 700 friends you know i don't have the luxury of lying about being a drug addict or a heroin addict or or the things that i've done or any of that because any of my friends can and do come in my stream and could easily dispel any lie that i told and i'm very aware of this so i don't lie on stream it's it's not something i can get away with you know <laughs> yeah i mean it's not about lying it's just like no nah, but everything that's it's an embellishment it's, all it's embellished chris has a lot of stories you know he's very much a talker oh yeah I guess for, for someone who's a bit skeptical, it's like... I don't blame people who are. Right, right. He's got a little bit of, like, flack online for some of his stories because he'll exaggerate some things. Oh, yes, he does. I feel like I've, I've gone places, I've done a decent amount of things. Yeah. But, like, I don't have, like, nearly... The it's weird. The people that are always in this situation, too, they always seem to be a mother and a boy. You ever notice that? There's, like, an archetype for this whole thing it's always a mother and their boy and the mother dotes on them and, and, and lets them do this stuff. And the boy is fat and slovenly and lazy. It's always a mother and a boy. It's, it's, it's really weird. Like I didn't live with my mother like him all my life. Of like stories that you have. I still don't. I, I, okay. I have not lived in my mother's house since I was 
20 years old it's been 20 years why the documentary further highlighted Chris's daily routine, showcasing mundane activities. And when I lived at her house when I was 20 years old, she asked me to. She was like, you should let that apartment go. You're paying way too much money, and you broke up with the girl that you were dating that you were living in the apartment with. And she was like, let that apartment go and come pay me $300. And I was like, really? And then she was like, yeah, just come back and take the basement, pay me 350 bucks a month. And I did live there for, I think, three years, something like that, until, until I was like 23, at which point... Um, I lost the love of my life again, as usual, and uh, and she moved away, and I attempted a suicide and failed in the basement of that house that I was paying three hundred fifty bucks a month for. And thank God I failed, but I mean, you know, uh, that was the last time that I lived with my mother. That was that was the last time in my life, and I'm not going to again unless she's like ninety six and needs me to or something. I don't I don't understand this whole mother and a boy thing. That weird archetype of like kind of like fat, white, trashy, usually southern, but not always. Like this guy's northern. Uh, like mother and a boy. So I was a mother and a boy and a grandmother. It's always really weird that that weird archetype of single parent, single parenting or whatever led to a lot of obesity and a lot of laziness in America or something. That that whole single mother parent thing. I think it did. I think I think they I think the mothers kind of coddled us and we got lazy and sat in the house and played video games our whole life. And I think this was a bad archetype for America. Um, single parent, you know, single parents. Ventures in his minivan, which he referred to as mudding. While Chris and his that is a minivan. You cannot mud in a fucking minivan. What the fuck are you? Friends hyped up Meyer as if it were a mythical. Mudding requires a truck. Particularly because you need really big fucking tires to spray the mud everywhere. Minivan tires, you're just gonna get stuck in the fucking mud, and they're gonna, and, and especially when you weigh 450 pounds like that, you're gonna sink the van into the fucking mud, and and, and it's gonna cost two thousand dollars to fucking tow that motherfucker out. Mm -mm. Get yourself a nice, nice, you know, fucking pickup truck, Silverado with with some torque, you know. Uh uh, that's that's not mudding to me. Destination. It turned out to be just a regular grocery store, dispelling any grand. We spray some mud with those crappy small minivan tires. Don't think so. You're surrounding it. Additionally, scenes depicted Chris indulging in frequent smoking sessions in his room. A detail. Yeah. That would later hold significance in his life, albeit at that moment it was only briefly mentioned. One oh my God. One of the aspects that the documentary delved into was Chris's relationships, particularly those with his friends. As the camera followed Chris through his daily life, it became evident that not all the individuals who surrounded him were necessarily genuine. Ian even made remarks in the doc- It's weird because I see this, this vibe of like fat and stoned Americans, and I'm fat and I'm stoned, but I don't think I ever fit that profile like them. I did it differently. Some of these people seemed like leeches, people who were drawn to Chris's fame rather than any sense of true friendship. Thankfully, though, as the documentary progressed, the curtain was. I didn't back do the. I didn't. I didn't like go to the Walmart fat and stoned. You know that. I don't know that. That's just not. That, that was never been my vibe. Managed to reveal a different side of Chris's circle. Individuals who appeared to be his true friends who really had his back. You know, I was. I was around these guys. Autistic. So I. You know, if you want. Yeah, they're all autistic. I guarantee it. It's obvious. Need to give commentary on this part. I can't. I can, I'm just going to tell you it from my. Yeah, thank God they have a crew, you know. Perspective. Or he okay. could have had a terrible life. He's got a crew. It's 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 good. Some of them are probably really mean people and and are there because he's famous. But no matter what, at least he has like some friends. Uh, oh wait, are you still talking? Yeah. Oh sorry. It was the day was. Sh among these individuals was Mike, a laid-back guy who simply wanted to spend time with Chris because he enjoyed his company. Their friendship had a history that extended far back, with appearances in older videos on Chris's channel. Mike's presence was a testament to the bonds of friendship, unaffected by the trappings of internet fame. Yeah, he didn't care. He's just been been the guy's friend forever. What's wrong with that? That's like my friend Bagon. He didn't care that I was a streamer. He's been my friend forever. We, we, we're, we're on opposite sides of the political spectrum and beliefs, but it doesn't matter. We've been just good friends forever. It doesn't matter videos down the line whatever we, made the new story. we have nothing in common at all he's married i'm not he's republican i'm democrat he's you know i'm not democrat i just I, i'm inr which is i'm not represented but i'll vote democrat to keep the devil from taking over my country you know what i'm saying 
like like who's facing 250 felony charges right now gotta keep the devils devils uh you know the watergate fucking 9 11 covid devils out of here you know what i'm saying so i vote democrat because it's the lesser of two evils not because i like joe biden or the democrats at all i don't like them at all and Begon likes that about me. And so it's good to keep a, you know, that, that I don't like them any more than he does. Like, you know, th- it's good to keep old friends, even if you don't have anything in common. Everybody, trash you know? Can. you know, it's, it's good, like, an, it, just because you like actually hanging out with each other, it's, it's fine. It's, oh, are you good, bro? Ever since no, th- no. He's always hitting me up, asking for help with videos and other stuff. You were the camera guy for oh, the yeah. one? Oh, yeah. A lot of them. Okay. For a good majority of so them. So you're the guy behind the camera most of yeah. them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another. That guy is on heroin. Another intriguing character in Chris's life was Roberts, a figure who occupied a unique place in the documentary. Robert had openly discussed having seen demons, and his dynamic with Chris seemed to veer between friendship and rivalry. There were hints of tension and disagreement, but the exact reasons for their disputes often appeared trivial. The culmination not of the heroin played out in a lightsaber battle Fentanyl. that was both highly anticipated and somewhat anticlimactic. There's a big difference. Heroin is needles and black tar and shit. Fentanyl is pills lazy fat people with pills in the suburbs is a lot different from a downtown shoot 'em up junkie smoking on foils and living in motels and shit there's a big difference between heroin junkies and fentanyl pill users big one there was a point where you could tell that like no one except- and it, those lines have blurred in america's mind they shouldn't have when they say heroin junkie they, they might sometimes be talking about a lazy person in the suburbs who eats fentanyl pills and smokes fentanyl right that's a lot different from an actual fucking junkie with a habit living downtown homeless on the fucking street shooting up needles in the porta potty there's a big fucking difference big one was having any fun at all so it was just uncomfortable but realistically how exciting can two guys battling with fake lightsabers really be the final character of the story well apparently millions of hits i guess some for some reason because they like making fun of people was chris's mom she was portrayed as a loving kind and supportive presence in his life with a genuine acceptance of her son's weirder qualities the interview with chris's mother revealed a deep and heartfelt connection showcasing her unconditional love for her son yeah that's like my mom like my, my mom had such a fucking battle she had to fight the system a couple of times like my mom really proved to the world that she loved me i, I, I mean i gotta say i've never met a mother who put up with more shit than mine I must have called her from jail 30 times. Uh, you know. Chris's content from his early days, the documentary provided the chance to witness his transformation. His evolution from a bona fide internet meme, known for his iconic lightsaber videos, to a multi-dimensional figure with a complex life story was both surprising and inspiring. The Full Force documentary not only showcased Chris's story, but also highlighted the importance of collaboration. The video was met with resounding approval. Full Force was a game changer in Fatty's life, marking a pivotal moment. With an astounding 24 million views and 1.1 million likes, the documentary garnered widespread acclaim for its impeccable production. Its impact on Fatty's online persona was profound, introducing a wave of fresh viewers to his content and effectively catapulting him into the limelight in a way he hadn't been before. He also got a substantial increase in subscribers, effectively doubling his channel size. Fatty's ascent to stardom seemed unstoppable as he basked in the newfound attention and support from millions of newly minted fans flooding into his channel. It seemed as though the ties were changing in his favor. He made a conscious decision to elevate the quality of his content, focusing on self-improvement and taking steps to enhance his production quality. It was a period marked by optimism and an apparent shift in spirits, but some would argue that this was also the beginning of a turbulent chapter in Chris's life. Soon after the release of Full Force, Chris was riding high. Tragically, this was cut short just a few months later when Chris's mother passed away. The woman who had supported him all of this time, throughout all of his endeavors, and kept his head screwed on straight, was now gone. Chris's tribute to his mother in the Wait, form of covering a Green Day things. song was a pretty emotional moment that resonated deeply with viewers. What do you love about Chris? Sure, he's mine. Yeah. I don't know. I just, he's a sweetheart. He really is. He's got his moments. I'm not going to say he's perfect because he is not far from mm-hmm. it. This poignant moment captured the essence of a mother's love, transcending all mm-hmm. external That's judges. exactly what my mom would say about me. He's had his moments with the high-speed chases and the many, many, many fucking criminal charges and the homelessness and the drug addiction but he's a sweetheart and i love him and he looks out for me and and i look out for him that's what my mom would say too 
it's love it, it, there's nothing wrong with it you know did i treat her well no i do now but most of my life i just you know wasn't in, in her life i was an addict i was crazy i was out there doing things and just living my life and not even thinking about her at all and uh she would call all the time and i would talk to her i always answer when she calls and and i love her and she's my only family member but mm, love is funny you, you sometimes especially if you have a child you're stuck with them you, whoever they end up being that's who they are and i was not the best person that my mom wanted me to be but i'm working on it Life is a work in progress, and I'm getting there slowly. I think by the time I, I, you know, by the time she's on her deathbed, I think I'll have a much better outlook. I'm sorry, a much better image of my life to show her than I ever have before. And uh, it's still, unless I, unless I, I, I somehow go viral and make ten million dollars, I won't impress her. But I, but I'll still be able to say I was happy and I'm in a good place uh, before she passes, you know, and that's what she wants. I did not live up to, to what she thought I was capable of, at least not yet. But I did try. There was times when she just threw up her hands. Like when I when I attempted suicide and failed, she didn't speak to me for three years. She just threw her hands up. That's what I would have done too. She was like, you took what I gave you and did this. And she was right. You know, she was right to say that. Um, when she's in moments of like weakness, like if she's exhausted or like on drugs because of a surgery or something like that she'll bring up my suicide because it broke her heart and uh it really hurts when she does it but it really hurt when i did it so that's what i get and it's my least favorite thing in the world when she brings up the suicide i hate it we used to have bad battles over it. She'd bring it up whenever she was unhappy with me or I'd fuck up or do something dumb or, you know, relapse again or something like that. She'd bring up the suicide because she knows that that I'm not proud of it and and, 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 she, and she knows how, 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 how much shame I feel about it. And so she'll bring it up to hurt me because it hurt her. And that's love, you know, when they actually love you enough to, to, to actually, like, hurt you. It's a good thing, you know, when they care enough to hurt you like that. Sounds like it isn't, but it is when when they when they'll say that devastating thing, like remember when you try to kill yourself and throw everything that I gave you away? Yeah, I do. And it hurts. And that's the price I pay for even trying it in the first place. It's a price I pay. She doesn't bring it up to hurt me out of some spite. She brings it up because it just comes up in her mind. And, and how devastating it was for her. And really just making people feel bad. And so she guilt trips me. She's like, away. remember when you tried to kill yourself? And I'm, like, and I'm like, yep, I do. You know, I do. Hey, following the passing of Fatty's mom, Chris's family rallied together, seeking ways to offer support during this challenging period. More specifically, his cousin Matt took it upon himself to uplift Fatty's spirit and steer it. his life towards a more positive direction, aiming to prevent him from falling deeper into the pit of depression. Matt utilized his own YouTube channel as a platform to document his efforts in aiding Chris, sharing updates, and chronicling their escapades. His goal was not only to motivate him, but also to showcase his journey of resilience. On November 29th, 2019, Matt uploaded a video titled, Fatty Invests in Himself and Tries Adulting. In the video, 
video, Chris could be seen smoking weed in the garage rather than inside Matt's house. Matt, ever conscious of the house smelling, was insistent that Chris contribute to the household. This simple act highlighted the contrast between the carefree, unedited content of Chris's videos and the real-world responsibilities that others around him faced. During the video, Matt interacted with Chris, but Chris's responses were often inaudible, emphasizing a degree of disengagement. He shared that he had worked from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then took a power nap. So it is, I had to lift my way half a parking lot to Bro, the building to listen drive to me. my car. Nobody feels bad that you're sitting out here smoking weed in my garage. I, I know. Okay. It's just freezing. Started. Well, you don't have to sit out here. No, I don't. Jesus. Just trying to use my time efficiently. Oh, to <sighs> Comment in the comment sections below if you think this is an efficient use of his time. The fact that Chris wasn't very fond of work is not surprising, given his established online persona. The challenge lay in balancing the demands of life with the creative and unpredictable world of YouTube. Matt then confronted Chris about his daily routine. That's he emphasized right. that Chris okay. couldn't sleep all day and encouraged him to contribute to the house. Matt then accompanied Chris to an electronics store where they purchased equipment to enhance Chris's content production. They acquired a tripod, lighting equipment, and a microphone, emphasizing that Chris needed to step up his game. When Matt asked Chris whether he should invest in a car or his business, Chris was momentarily stumped. So here's the question. Do you invest in your business or do you invest in your car? You can only do one. Very, very good question. No, it's not. It's you always invest in yourself. By investing in your business, you're investing in yourself. You always yep. bet on yourself. You always Yep. That's why I spent all this money on microphones and TVs and cameras and shit. Uh, some days I think about buying PR. Uh, just to get more people on the channel. I mean, I don't know. It, it, although, I don't want to say I bought it, you know. I just need um, somebody who's better at PR than me. Because I don't like PR. I've never thought it was a valid discipline. But it's needed. Maybe I should try and apply to Lenovo. Or, uh, what is it called? Uh, no uh, Novo. Which is... Uh... uh De uh, Devin Nash's uh, uh, ad agency and just see what they can do for exposure. So traditional common sense would say fix your, fix your up back window. But it's, it's not the only reason, like, honestly, I don't want the fame and I don't want the clout and I don't want the exposure and I don't want the numbers and I don't want the follows and I don't want the money and I don't care. The difference is other people care. Like other people in my life care. And so I, I, I thought maybe that would at least enable me to care. If they care, I guess I could care. I don't care about that, that, that those things. I don't value, value those things at all. But if other people do, I suppose I could care. I don't care about those things, though. I say that. Get a tripod so you can up your production value and more people will watch your content. No. Nope. It's entirely personality. They'll watch... They'll watch if they like you, and if they and, and and they won't if they don't. It won't matter if it's a crappy cell phone screen or not, or a tripod or any of that stuff. Nope. What he's saying is an outsider's view, uh, who doesn't have the personality to actually be on screen and be a talking head all day, and so they think that they that that they can just buy their way with tools to being famous. And sure, if, uh, PR consultants will help you do that, like I was just talking about. But no, it, 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 it's a charisma and a personality that tri all the tripods and all the ASMR mics in the world won't won't uh, won't you know that won't uh, won't fix. It's it's a problem that that all the tech in the world can't fix. It, 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 you have to have that charisma that that. Uh, type a personality thing even if you're fat even if you're you know lazy it doesn't matter if you have the x factor you'll be fine all the tripod all he was fine he was fine he was so fat and he was absolutely fine he did he, he got five hundred thousand subs proving that no all the tripods in the world won't won't make a career do not a career make you know it's the it's the it's the cut spa the charisma, the X factor, the the people, the people skills to pay the bills and all that stuff. It, you can you can do all the green screens and microphones in the world that you want, and sure that stuff does help. It doesn't hurt, but it won't build a career. It's more about whether can people stand you and like you or not. Do they do you add to their day? 
do you make their world a better place for being there you know are you uh a good influence in their lives are you ha are, are you funny are you happy do they enjoy you no matter what your weaknesses are and all that stuff and all the tripods in the world won't fix that it's the it's the uh it's the view of a man who is on the long road to the middle right long hard road to the middle the actual star doesn't need to buy a tripod and he knows that he doesn't need to buy a tripod he has their love it doesn't matter it's it's it, all the gear in the world sure uh uh, look at marvel all that cgi money it was great but what did it do when they didn't have stories worth telling it killed marvel and you can buy all the tripods and the fancy cgi in the fucking world but if you don't actually have good writing and good cut spot and charisma and actors and stuff and compelling stories it doesn't matter how much money you spend on cgi or what your fucking budget is or or how many tripods you buy it's 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 all personality Right. 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 That's what right. we're doing right now. Video right now. So now look how unpleasant and unhappy this guy looks. And he's not, and it's not a good look on camera. And it's not good for me. He's like, rah, 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 rah. and I do too. I get unpleasant and unhappy on my stream and I yell all the time. All the time I do this because I'm not perfect, right? But the other kid, I don't know. I'm seeing a different vibe that I think is much more successful specifically because he doesn't need anything, but his personality, he doesn't. And, and, and apparently his personality goes over like gangbusters. And this guy with the crab face is not a good look. Okay. See it. Right. 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 Now, the, now, now this, you can see it. He's smiling. He's happy. He's funny. He's he's having a secret joke moment with the with the twenty five hundred viewers, and 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 he's got a, he's got an inside joke with people, and this is the charisma that this other guy suggesting buying a tripod doesn't have, and this guy's got the crab face, the kid doesn't. Right, right now, as the video drew close, and he doesn't look happy, and that's the problem. Don't be on YouTube if you don't look happy, or at least look angry, or or that you care about something at least his happiness and pride in Chris. The next chapter in Chris's life is documented by Matt, provided a stark and unfiltered look into the aftermath. Ordinary Matt. He's got more subs than me. I can't say anything. <laughs> Ordinary Matt. I would die first. I would die first before giving myself a title like that. There's no way. I'm sorry, but... Like, there's some Ordinary Gamers, which I think is actually kind of cool and sort of faceted. Then there's just Ordinary Matt, which is, like, pretty much the most Debbie Downer name I've ever heard on fucking internet before. I'm sorry. Get shared. The video in question depicted Matt and a group of friends embarking on a daunting task. A 25-hour cleaning marathon to restore the house to a semblance of... Ah. Uh... You should have hired a maid service, believe it or not. Even with the cat shit, they're going to charge you an upsell, but they don't care about that shit. They put, they put gloves on. They don't care, right? Should have paid a maid service. Why are you torturing your fucking friends with this? It's, it, it, it's for content, and it wasn't... I mean, it was good content, but it wasn't... It's inappropriate. So you should have just hired somebody to clean your house. It's a little ridiculous to put your friends, your friends through this. It was a task that literally confronted the physical debris left behind, but metaphorically, the emotional weight of loss and neglect. The house was in pretty rough shape. The basement, often depicted as the darkest and most unsettling place in the house, featured urine-soaked sheets on the floor, discarded clothing, and a macabre display of dinosaur drawings adorning the walls. The scenes from upstairs were equally distressing. He drew those? He's actually a really fucking good pen and ink artist. Why would he bother being a YouTube star? Marcus and most unsettled. He's actually very good at drawing. Place in the house. What? Featured urine-soaked sheets on the floor, discarded. Wow, I actually like his work a lot more than his work. It's like what? If the, if I was that skilled at art, there's no way I would be on YouTube unless I was doing YouTube drawing. You know display of dinosaur drawings adorning the walls he's actually good unless somebody else did it i don't know maybe i don't know 
does that kid have that kind of skill i think it is him because the the dinosaur's face kind of looks like his face wow life is so weird distressing broken windows allowed the elements to infiltrate the house further worsening the conditions animal feces was scattered across the floor and pieces of the ceiling had fallen in littering the that? rooms the oh, upper no, floor okay. like the rest of the house was in a state of disarray and disrepair while matt and his friends worked diligently to clean and restore the house they encountered yet another disheartening reality chris who was present during this endeavor used the bathrooms in the house without flushing the act for the challenges of so there's months of dry piss and shit in the toilets what a lovely subject storing order to a space that had been neglected for a significant period as matt ventured into chris's room he was met with a site that painted a poignant picture of the situation chris's bed was a makeshift structure supported by cinder blocks and covered with a sheet or some form of covering garbage covered the entire floor making it clear that this was a space that had been overlooked for far too long matt's emotions and frustrations were palpable and it became very evident that he was growing weary of the situation the cleaning process while undoubtedly a step towards improvement was a reminder of the immense challenge they faced chris's safe once intended for valuable possessions had been repurposed as a repository for catch as the video progressed matt shared the aftershots of their cleaning efforts while the transformation was evident it was essential to acknowledge that the house was still far from ideal in this particular video the tension between chris and matt reached a breaking point with significant consequences the central incident revolved around chris abandoning his cat while he left to indulge in a smoke session leaving matt to contend with the aftermath matt already dealing with cleaning the house had to face even more cat urine and feces one of these striking moments in the video was when matt takes the last abandoned cat to an animal shelter. It's an instance where Matt had to make a difficult decision for the welfare of the abandoned animal, embodying all of the challenges with this disgusting house. He goes on and on and on about how much he cares about his cats and all this other shit. But then he leaves one here to fend for itself. We had no idea that it was here until last week. And um, I think it's just, I think it's fucked up. So. It was evident that he was at his breaking point, grappling with the challenges posed by Chris's actions. The tension escalated to the point where law yeah and he is right about keeping him out of jail because that's what will happen if you neglect animals like that you go to jail they won't truck for that and they shouldn't truck with it and he's right he kept you out of jail that is true it sounds sensationalistic but it but it's true you know um i just Posted two stacks of linen bandages when I only wanted to do one. Yeah. And then I bought the healing potions the that must be on my bar. Yep. Uh, enforcement became involved the police arrived at matt's house in response to the ongoing situation chris asserted that matt was withholding his property and medications a claim that further exacerbated this tension matt's attempts to explain the situation to police were perceived as half-hearted the discord between the two played out with neither party willing to yield to the other's perspective for a more comprehensive understanding of the circumstances surrounding this incident additional text was provided in the video's description this context offered viewers a glimpse into the broader issues and challenges that underpinned their strained relationship airsoft fatty is added again for months he left to stop at my house after multiple attempts to deliver it to him he decided to have the police show up at my house so we could get his property fun fact what? the property most of it was clothing i bought for him wasting police resources again wasting my time again being dramatic as usual i made this video as evidence that i don't have any of christopher's stuff at my house i was never withholding any of his stuff and the things he left he has now end of it probably not though he will find something else to cause issues with keep in mind he could drive to dc chicago detroit multiple times and nyc but for months could not get his stuff without police escort when i met him twice this month without having the police present he was playing games as usual i'm beyond done with him and his endless drag on my time and energy in matt's final video he candidly addresses the circumstances surrounding his decision to stop hanging out with chris it's a moment of frustration where he lays bare the issues that have plagued their friendship and his perception of chris's behavior matt's opening statements are clear and unambiguous he expresses his deep disappointment with chris asserting that he's done helping him his words also underscore the exhaustion and disappointment he's experienced as a result of chris's actions the core issue as matt sees it is chris's lack of effort in improving his own life he is just crying and blubbering about things that are not factual or based in reality. And he calls me and texts me and asks me to not do these videos. And as you've seen in, mm. in the earlier video, I'm stopping these videos. Not because he asked. I hope these videos stay up here forever. I hope you shame the f 
out of him forever. This lack of initiative strained their familial bond Why? and left Matt with a sense of hopelessness. The video delves into the fact that Chris's family has been attempting to provide support and assistance to him for years. Despite these efforts, Chris's behavior has left his loved ones exasperated. In Matt's view, Chris has become a source of shame for the family, and it's a reality he's not willing to tolerate. One of the central themes of the video is the accusation that Chris engages in deceit, manipulation, and falsehoods. Matt asserts that Chris employs these tactics, usually feigned sympathy, crying, and emotional displays to elicit assistance and support from others. He contends that Chris was never truly homeless, but instead portrayed himself as such to gain sympathy. According to Matt, this portrayal was a ruse to avoid basic responsibilities like washing clothes, taking showers, or doing dishes. In his view, Chris resorted to fabricating a homeless status to escape these essential life tasks, exploiting the sympathy and assistance offered by those who believed he was in dire need. He's not homeless. He's never been homeless. And myself and my family have worked for years ensuring that he is not homeless. The video takes a clear and unequivocal stance. Matt wants people to hold Chris accountable for his behavior indefinitely. He seeks to shed light on what he perceives as manipulative tactics and a pattern of dependency Welcome to my strain, not only his traveler. relationship with what Chris, can I do but also you? the willingness of others to offer assistance. And while his living situation was falling apart, there were other factors pulling at his psyche as well. I love energy drinks, which is why I'm proud to be sponsored by the best me guys too. in the game at it, G Fuel. They sent me a bunch <laughs> of stuff, including four of these Dream Demon energy drinks. They sent me four, and I only have one left to show you guys because I drank all the other ones because I like it so much. They taste great, they have zero calories, and they get me personally wired as hell when I'm editing videos or playing games. I feel electrified. This stuff is like injecting adrenaline straight into your veins with a syringe. Except it comes in a can and in tubs, so you don't have to drink it, and you won't look like like an addict. They have a bunch of these tubs, which are an energy drink as well, but it's just powder that you pour into water, and then you can drink it whenever you want. This one right here is called Hype Sauce, and it tastes like raspberry lemonade. Really good. This one is called Pog Juice for whenever you want to uh, soy face. <laughs> This one is super cool, it's called Ice Cream, and it's a collaboration with the PlayStation game, Twisted Metal, and it has a sour strawberry cotton candy flavor. And they also made sure to send me this one specifically, which is called Clickbait. They were very adamant that I show you guys this one, probably because uh, they've been watching the vids, they know what we're all about. And G Fuel is always adding new flavors to their site, so get it while supplies last, do not wait, very limited quantity. I love G Fuel, you know G Fuel, and you should love it if you don't already. It's good for your soul, it's good for your productivity. Listen guys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, all of the four Fortnite yats will be begging you to share some when they find out that you have G Fuel. So what are you waiting for? Grab a tub, get some energy drinks, and be sure to use code TURKEY at checkout so they know that I sent you. Alright, now back to the video. Thanks guys. In February of 2020, a significant chapter in Chris's life began when he came under the management of a Discord user named Josh. This arrangement was more complex and problematic than it initially appeared, as Josh took on a role that extended beyond typical management responsibilities. During one of Fatty's streams, he would say that he was logging off before getting a notification on his phone, to which he visibly sighed and said, okay, I guess I'm not getting off. Chat suspected this was basically his manager screaming at him to stay on the live stream. <laughs> he started to call him out for essentially forcing Fatty to stream against his will. Are you sad? I won't be nice. <laughs> okay. Um, never mind. Just here. Uh, Get back to work, so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Stream or, or get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Josh had originally been working at a dispensary and was essentially Chris's supplier. But once they started talking, Chris decided to let him oversee his entire channel operation. Oh After getting God. backlash from several fans, Josh, alongside others, booted up a stream where they orchestrated an intervention, wherein they call Chris lazy and basically assert the idea that he's an incapable individual who could not live independently. While their assessment was not entirely unfounded, the audience's perception was that it revealed a lack of genuine concern for Chris's well-being. On Monday, do we not have a stream with Canute and Joe? a big workout stream where they're going to make you do the shit that you need to do and it's not going to be any ifs, ands, or buts. And when we get on there, if you act a fool, the whole internet is going to see everything and they need to know because this isn't fair to us or anyone else. As the stream progressed, it took a turn toward hostility, seemingly showcasing Josh and his cohorts ganging up on Fatty, attempting to emotionally manipulate him. Throughout oh, the stream, there were numerous man. instances where they consistently interrupted him, depriving him of the opportunity to express himself or respond adequately to anything discussed. Dude, you're fucking diabetic. Yeah. Even like yeah, even just, let, it, let him nothing. talk. Yeah. I want him to talk. Yeah. I'm tired of always eating the same exact thing every day. Stop, 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 stop. Let, let, let him talk. Let him talk. Let him talk. Shut the fuck up. 
Yeah, well, did you not just go to New York and Chicago and do all these trips and have ridiculous amounts of foods that I knew you shouldn't have had? Did you stuff your face with pizza in New York and do all kinds of shit that you shouldn't have? Surprisingly, what? That is your it, it, okay. If that guy was my manager, not only would I fucking fire him, I would threaten to sue him for speaking to me like that. Have some personal respect and and accountability. If anybody ever spoke to me like that, I would destroy them professionally. This is why people don't cross me. I've never been in a fist fight. They know better. They know better. I will not struck with behavior like that. Uh uh. Mm mm. Was quite you let fuckers walk all over you how long till you're a fucking you know until you're you're like basically a fucking like like what uh, what, what like a moving stairs at the airport you're you're basically one of those moving escalators that that are like flat and, and take you across the airport you're like one of those you know you, you just let people you're a doormat if you let if you let people treat you like a doormat it won't be long until you're a fucking doormat i've never been spoken to by anybody like this the one man who ever spoke to me like this i put in jail for two years Mentions. Instead of bolstering his stance, it led the to several asteroid. content creators Mr. releasing Kinkin. videos asserting that Fatty's manager was coercing him into streaming against his own will, essentially manipulating him in the process. Josh Ooh, look Lord at all that money. Life was akin to yeah. that of Wrangler, but with a more sinister twist. Josh had access to all of Chris's social media accounts, effectively taking control of his online presence. In a move that demonstrated a disturbing level of control, Josh linked his own bank account to Chris's ad. Wow. Since diverting the income that was supposed wow you let a you let this guy just straight up like become a criminal and take all your money you are you are a doormat you are a doormat you think how is does someone with five hundred thousand fucking subs give a flying fuck what a manager thinks i mean i'm sorry but on top of it there's a lot of other kind of like fat lazy people in the world who will who, who will like you and hang around you who won't treat you like that it was during this period that Chris had severed ties. There are women in the world who would ab absolutely love to marry you who will not treat you like that. That is retarded. Genuine friends, leaving him isolated, but only Josh and his associates around now. Who is that a pistol? It is. And it's weird because he seems to be aiming it directly at his head, which is something that's so fucking annoying to me you never ever 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 point a gun at a living thing no i mean like like a human anyways you never ever like don't pull your thing out or ever have a fucking uh like a barrel of a gun aimed at a living thing unless you intend to kill that thing do not ever like like this take this idiot's gun away from him that is the most unsafe gun behavior i've seen in a long time take that fucking idiot idiot's gun away from him in exploitation didn't stop with chris he turned his sights i actually like you know I, i've actually owned guns i've actually shot guns I've, I've got friends who own many guns that is not how you operate a hand uh, that is not how you operate or even like like hold a firearm and i find it disgusting and i want him i want his gun rights strip from him old friend of chris who had appeared in previous videos and featured in the full force documentary josh made attempts to get robert into a similar situation that is how people get killed robert's social media Fucking accounts idiot. and changed the adsense settings to divert earnings into his own bank robert eventually discovered this manipulation and publicly exposed josh's nefarious actions wow. in retaliation josh appeared to orchestrate a hack stuff like this social media is is why is why i don't want a manager i don't want pr i don't want to hire novo i don't want to fucking do do fancy clickbait fucking thumbnails to lie to people i don't want anybody ever having any input on my job 